So this might be a more familiar sight to a few of you. Nice, drilled on chest. How would you do it? Because how else would you live your life? Um, so with Onyx, he is a D-sex male. He does have a very stringy juvenile coat still. He's only just turned two. Um, as you can see, he is losing coat. He did have an anaesthetic about four weeks ago. Now, anaesthetics can change how the coat behaves. It can cause them to drop. Um, and it can sometimes change the texture slightly. However, with this D6 coat, he has very stringy, soft feathering. So all on his chest, his legs, uh, his rear, he does grow more feathering than what Marvin does. I predict as the coat matures, he will continue with the more extreme feathering, we'll say it as. Usually he does grow a top knot that is trimmed back at the moment. Um, so what I usually do with his coat, because it is that little bit stringier, a little bit more elastic, we do like to spray it before we brush it. Now he does have a lot of dirt in there for all uh, bugs, probably. He's a very messy dog. He likes to get in the mud, he likes to sit in the water, be a typical two-year-old, and then he likes to come sit on the couch. Unfortunately, he doesn't approve when we tell him not to when he's filthy. So same principle as what I did with Marvin. Just going to spray him down, brush it through. Now with your chest, you can see, if you would put your head up, you do actually have almost folds, so you've got to remember to part all this to get into the middle of your chest. Good boy. Yeah. Now, he's not as well trained as Marvin. He's what I would term him a spoiled brat. So what we'll do is we'll just continue to brush this through until we get it mostly dry again. The grooming sprays will dry pretty quickly. And again, same principle, start from the bottom. Make sure you can put your comb all the way through. Now that jerking motion is where there's a knot. So what I'll do is I'll go back, I'll find it, you can see it there, I'm not sure if you guys can see it. It's a nice big knot in the white hair. And that is another thing with the different colours of coat. Down this side. The different colours have different textures. Browns tend to be a bit more dense. The blacks would have what I would deem the most correct coat. The Lanciers have generally the correct black coat and then a white coat that is either very long and stringy like his, or it can be short and dense sometimes. It does depend on the dog, whether they are entire whether they are desexed. But again, the same principle applies. Start at the bottom, work upwards. sure you get into those folds. So that's generally where the drool will sit. And in between that bit is where you'll end up with mats. Now a lot of you will have nice big long chests like Onyx has. So Marvin's is cut off at the moment because we are growing it back into shape. Whereas with his, he's left to do whatever his coat desires. Now he will fidget a bit on the table. He's not as comfortable up here. He is injured at the moment, therefore he's probably not as comfortable sitting on a hard surface. If you have a dog that's doing the same thing, 
can use like a gym mat or something like that to lie them on on the floor and they may just be that little bit more comfortable with that little bit more support. Now, the other thing with these sex dogs, I know he has a knot in here because I found it last week and he got to get it out, is all of this stuff here where the ear grows long and it comes down behind the ears and it's a very soft, silky coat. So it will knot a lot easier than a lot of the other coats. Let me sit up, buddy. Come here. That is a very, very sensitive skinned part of your dog. If you have a mat there and you need to cut it out, you need to be very careful. The skin will split a lot easier on ear leathers and just around the base of your ear. So when you're pulling knots, cutting knots, or doing something around the ear, you need to be very careful. As you can see, he keeps pulling away from me. So that is just because I am trying to get this knot out without having to cut it. You can see there all that white stuff is just dirt and oil that is collected in that knot. So as you can see, like there is another knot there. I can't get the comb through it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to very gently put a little bit of pressure on the comb and just see if it will release. You probably can't see where my arm was. And it is just putting a slight amount of pressure to see if the knot will give way. And like it has. Stop. And this sort of feathering can actually continue up and around the shoulders and onto the back of the neck. And again, if your dog wears a collar or anything like that, you might notice more knots in and around here. And if you do have a desexed coat, you may be finding that you are getting more knots in these longer parts. That's why, again, it is essential to be combing your dog out at least once a week. Just to really make sure you're keeping the skin in good condition. Can you step forward, please? I know. Good boy. Now. So what you need to be able to do is put a comb through all of this as well, down your ears. If you've got a top knot, through your top knot as well. A lot of desex dogs will grow it in. It's a long, silky, fine hair that likes the knot. Boy. Good boy. Step. Sit back down, just don't fall off, please. So it's the same on the other side as well. And a lot of desex coats are a little bit easier to work with. You can put that little bit of pressure on the knots. They tend to give way a bit easier in like the long chest feathering and stuff like that. Because it is a silkier coat, it is a finer coat, it doesn't tend to have the traction like the thicker, more denser coats do. Now he hasn't been bathed in a couple of weeks like Marvin. I probably won't bath him as his coat. He doesn't really need it. It brushes up quite clean. Marvin's I do more for show maintenance. It's not necessary. You do not have to bath your dog every couple of weeks. But with Marvin's coat, it is a very correct oily coat. Therefore, if it gets wet, it smells. So what we do is we keep him nice and clean because he does not understand the concept of not being allowed in the house, as I'm sure many of your dogs don't. When you bath your dogs, it's entirely up to you. It's what you can cope with, what your dog needs, what your dog's skin needs, and what you're happy to deal with if your dog likes to roll in mud.
you can see there, it still is removing coat. It's not really causing resistance anymore. But with his coat, and what I'm assuming is with a lot of D6 coats, at least the ones I've had to deal with, it does, this sort of long feathering, you can just sit there and pull out. So you can comb and comb and comb and comb to your heart's content and you'll always be able to get something out. As long as you can put the comb through it, like you can see where all that dirt and that drawer was, because I am still getting the resistance on the coat. I know there's no knots there now. I'm still getting that little bit of dead hair out. But I know that I've got all the knots out. I can feel through the coat, feel that it's nice and it's free of knots. I can still run my fingers through it and pull hair out if I want to. But I don't need to. And because he has a shorter attention span and a little bit of a pain problem at the moment, I'm not going to force him to sit up on the grooming table to make sure he is completely combed out. I will do him in sections. So probably in a couple of hours, I'll make sure all, all his feathering's combed out. Um, he will also need his body combed out again. He has lost a quite a bit of hair after having the anesthetic. Um, but yeah, so I'll make sure in a couple of hours that I go back and I, I give him a break. And I'll come back and I'll comb his other feathering out. And then I'll come back in another couple of hours, or maybe even tomorrow, and just run a comb through his body. Um, but it is what keeps your dogs happy, what keeps you happy, and there's no point getting frustrated and forcing your dog to do it if you can do it in a couple of hours once they've had a break. Um, sometimes with bigger jobs, we do like to give them breaks, especially if they're older. Um, with him, he does have a partially torn cruciate. So we are taking it easy with him so he doesn't get to run around and jump and do all sorts of stuff. Therefore, I wouldn't recommend letting him sit up here on this grooming table for the hour or two straight that I'm going to need to groom him out. So I'll do that chest part. I'll let him down now. I'll probably give him breakfast. And then another hour or so, I'll come back. And I'll probably do his feathering on the ground where he's more comfortable.